Hello and welcome to our review tutorial on productivity. Uh, when we think about productivity, we can distinguish between two major types. We can think about single factor or sometimes called local productivity. And you can think about productivity of your labor force or even of an individual laborer. You can think about the productivity of your equipment or how um, productive your material is as, as well. Or you could do more of a global factor, which is called multi-factor productivity, where you get the productivity of an entire, say, um, assembly line or an entire uh, assembly facility, an entire um, production facility. Um, regardless of which type of productivity you're trying to um, analyze, we basically use the same formula. Productivity is determined by the amount of output um, that is generated by a given amount of input. So let's do an example of labor productivity here. Um, two workers, Charles and Nagy, both work for Acme Incorporated. On Tuesday, Charles worked a full eight-hour day and produced 500 gizmos. Nagy worked half a day, four hours, and produced 275 gizmos. Who was more productive? So for Charles, his output was 500 gizmos, and it took him eight hours to do that. So on average, he produced 62.5 gizmos per hour. Nagy's productivity, his output was 275 gizmos, um, and his input was four hours, so he produced 68.75 gizmos per hour. So in absolute terms, while Nagy only produced 275 gizmos, he was more productive um, than Charles was because he, he made more gizmos um, per hour. So let's assume that each of our gizmos sells for $10. So rather than productivity and the number of units per hour, which we just did on the last slide, in this let's calculate our per hour dollar productivity of the worker Charles. So in this case, we want to um, use our numerator to convert the 500 units into how, how, how many dollars were, were the output. So 500 units times $10 per unit will tell us how many dollars Charles generated. And again, it took him eight hours to do that. So his productivity was $625 worth of output um, per hour. So in order to figure out if a productivity is number is good or bad, you have to do what's called benchmarking. Um, so you need to compare the productivity of a resource, whether it be labor, material, equipment. You need to compare it to other similar resources. So we actually just did benchmarking with two workers, Charles and Nagy, and we found out which was more um, productive. Another thing to benchmark against is your historical average. So maybe on average, Charles was able to produce 60 units um, per or 60 gizmos per hour and we see this last week um, he produced 62 so we would say he's doing better than his historical average he's becoming more productive you could bench you can also benchmark against internal goals maybe as a, a, a company your goal is to have workers produce at least 70 units per hour um, you can benchmark against industry averages, so what, what is your competition, how good is your competition at productivity. Or finally, you can even look outside of your industry at world-class firms, and this makes sense. A lot of firms use um, uh, Motorola or, or Walmart as benchmarks in terms of logistics, um, so uh, you can benchmark against uh, world-class firms. So let's do here an example of multi-factor productivity. Uh, assume that Acme produced 5,000 gizmos each um, with a selling price of $10. They used 100 hours of total labor, so maybe 12 or 13 workers. They used 150 pounds of material. They pay their workers $12 an hour. Um, they have an overhead rate of 50% of their direct labor. And their material costs are $14 per pound. So uh, what is the multi-factor productivity for Acme? So whenever we do multi-factor productivity, we want to convert everything into dollars. So we need to express labor, overhead, and material usage in terms of dollars. Those will be our, our, um, our inputs. And our output then will be our, our units, uh, 5,000 gizmos. And we need to express those as um, in their selling price as well. So our, our numerator will be our output, 5,000 units times $10 per hour. Our denominator now will have three components. The first one will be um, uh, um, labor, 
and we'll have our labor hours multiplied by our um, rate. The, the second one will be uh, overhead, so it's going to be our labor times 0.5. And then the third one will be our material usage multiplied by $14 per pound. So in this case, we would see our multi-factor productivity is $8.77. And basically that means for every $1 of input, we were able to generate $8.7 of output. Um, and again, in order to figure out if that number is any good, we would have to compare it to either our goals or our past history um, or something like that. So what are some of the things that impact productivity? Basically, it's anything that impacts the productivity formula, output divided by input. So you can think about your, your labor, how good they are, how efficient they are, how fast they are. Um, your management, you, do you have a good, strong management team um, that has a good grasp of, of what they're doing and their, their processes and efficiencies? The process itself, how, how efficiently is the process laid out? Is there lots of... Uh, waste in it and so forth. The types of equipment and machinery you use. Do you have so, sort of outdated slow machinery or do you have very um, technologically updated you know, you know, fast machinery? And quality in terms of defects. Any um, product that you produce that has a defect that you have to scrap while you've you've put a lot of input into it in terms of labor and material but you've actually got no output out of it because you can't sell it. Uh, the last productivity concept is productivity change. You want to compare productivity in one time period with productivity in a previous time period. So in order to calculate your percent change, you do your um, productivity in time period 2 minus your productivity in time period 1 divided by your original productivity. So let, let's say yesterday Charles made 500 gizmos in 8 hours. Today he made 530 gizmos in 8 hours. Calculate his productivity change. So on the numerator, um, you have 500 is productivity number one or productivity two. So productivity two is 530 gizmos divided by eight hours. Um, then you'll subtract productivity one, which was 500 units of output and eight hours of input, and you'll divide um, by uh, productivity one again 500 divided by eight. Um, after all the algebra. And solving the equation, you would see that Charles's productivity increased by 6%. So here we're looking for a positive number. Here we have a positive 6%. Um, if your productivity goes down and you're less productive, you would actually have a negative number. So maybe negative 10% means your productivity was down 10%. And finally, if your productivity was essentially zero, your productivity changed, that would mean you're, you're basically just as productive in time period two as you were in time period one. And this will end our review of uh, productivity.